Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I am a content developer with education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the Remote Access VPN JWeb Learning Bike. All right, so here is our example. In this example, we have a few different devices. We have SRX1, which is the device we will be configuring today. And with that, we have Server1, which is in the server zone. And you can see the IP address for Server1. That's 10.10.20.123. Then SRX1 connects to the internet through the untrust zone. And I didn't mark it on the diagram, but that interface there is Gigi002, which is important. We'll see that in a minute. And then we have the remote worker that connects into the internet that needs to get access to server one. All right, so with that, we're going to be configuring a remote access VPN using the NCP exclusive remote access client. We need to get access to server one. Remote worker's IP will change, so we don't know what that's going to be. It's not, gonna, it's not a static address. And then all user traffic should go through the VPN. We're not going to set up split tunneling. And then we're going to use JWeb to configure the remote access VPN. So with that, let's go ahead and jump to the JWeb interface and get this going. Okay, so here is the JWeb interface for SRX1. And one thing I do want to point out is that this SRX device is also in use as my home internet gateway. And there's some other configurations. So just keep that in mind. There's going to be some other configuration snippets, parameters, whatever that you'll see that don't pertain to this learning byte. So just don't worry about that when you do see it. We can go from there. And also, we are not using a radius server or certificates with this learning byte. We are using pre-shared keys. And that can be very useful for a couple of different situations. Say you have a customer or you are running a small enterprise and you have, I don't know, less than 10, maybe less than 20, maybe less than 50 people. And so it's not a big deal to configure the users locally on the SRX. And maybe you just don't want to deal with certificates. So you can get around that by configuring some access profiles, which I'll show here in a minute, since that is what we are doing for this learning byte. Okay, so let's begin. We need to first configure an address pool. And so with this, let's go ahead and name it RA for remote access. And this is going to be the network range that we hand out IP addresses from. That's going to be a slash 24. And then we need to at least specify a primary DNS server as well. Then we can click OK. Then let's go to Access Profile to create a new Access Profile. Then we need to name this Access Profile. And we can specify an authentication order or we can leave it off because by default, it will just do the password authentication order, but it doesn't hurt to select it either. Address assignment, we need to select that pool we just created. And then we need to create a user. Now this is the user or users, if you're creating multiple, that will be attempting to connect to your remote access VPN to access those internal resources. Now the thing to keep in mind here is that this is case sensitive for the username. We specify capital NCP, then lowercase user1. If we don't enter that username like that with the correct capitalization in the client, when we set that up, the tunnel won't establish. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I entered a password of lab123. Gonna click the checkbox or the check mark and click next, click finish, click okay. We see the access profile was created successfully. And let's go ahead and configure an interface, the ST01 interface. So we'll click on interface ports. Then we can select the ST0 interface, click go. We can select that interface and we can create a new logical interface. Now we're gonna use logical number one for the unit and select the zone of untrust. Now, this is where we're putting the ST0.1 interface in. It's necessary to configure an ST0 interface, and we'll have to bind that to the VPN as well, just like a site-to-site -site VPN. So keep that in mind. With a dynamic VPN, with the Pulse client, it's a policy-based VPN, so we don't create an ST0 logical unit number for it. So here we need to do that. We can leave that as unnumbered. And the other thing I want to point out is we're putting this in the untrust zone. This isn't specifically necessary. You could put the... SD0 logical interface in its own zone, and then you can craft security policies to help control traffic in and out of that VPN zone. But for the sake of time, I'm going to avoid doing that, and I'll place this interface in the untrust zone, which is the zone that will also have the Gigi002 interface. Then let's go ahead and jump to that zone. 
because we do need to enable some host inbound services. So I'll click edit and we can enable it for the entire zone which would enable it for the ST01 and the Gigi002 interface. And that's perfectly fine. But keep in mind that we don't need to enable this, the IKE service for the ST0.1 interface. That's unnecessary. So we could just go to the actual interface itself, select the Gigi002 interface, find IKE, move that over, click OK. And it doesn't show anything here, but that's because we didn't enable it at the zone level. We can go back, look at the host inbound traffic, for Gigi002, we can see that IKE is set. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is go to the IP set configuration. We want to configure Ike or phase one. And we want to configure some proposals, but there is already a proposal configured. It uses SHA-256 for the authentication algorithm, uses pre-shared keys for the authentication method, and uses AES-256 CBC for the encryption algorithm. And although not shown, it does use Diffie-Hellman Group 19. I can edit that to show a little more. You can see Group 19 there. And then the IKE policy, we can select that. We can see we're using mode aggressive. So that's the aggressive mode. That's going to be IKE version 1. Pre-share keys for authentication method. We are using the predefined or user-defined RA NCP IKE Pro proposal. And that pre-share key is set to Juniper123. And so I pre-configured those beforehand to save some time. So then we do need to configure a gateway. Let's create a new gateway. Call this RA-NCP-GW. Select the policy that was configured earlier. Interface is going to be Gigi002. Now we need to select the remote access VPN option. And that gives some different options now. We select the IKE user. We want to set that to shared ID. Then we want to set the remote identity type to email address. We want to set that to user at lb.net. And then we'll set the IKE version to version one only. And if we don't set that Ike version to version one only or V1 only, it's going to use version one. So just keep that in mind. It's not absolutely necessary, but it doesn't hurt to explicitly configure it. All right, so IPsec phase two, let's jump to that. And I have a proposal configured already. We can see it's set to the encryption algorithm of AES-256 GCM. And when you set that, you don't need to set an authentication algorithm. So let's go ahead and look at the IPsec policy. And we can see here that perfect forwarding secrecy is set using Diffie-Hellman Group 19. And then we're using that proposal that we just looked at, that user-defined proposal. And then let's go ahead and configure the VPN. Again, the policy and the proposal here were pre-configured to save some time. Create a new VPN. And we'll name this RA dash ncp dash vpn remote gateway you need to set that to the ra ncp gw gateway ipsec policy the predefined one or the one user defined that is not predefined and we need to set the interface the bind interface the st01 and then we need to go to ipsec vpn options and we need to configure a traffic selector here now traffic selectors is kind of the beginning of configuring split tunneling but in our case we don't want to have split tunneling so we'll call this ra ncp dash ts and so what we need to do here is we need to specify all zeros for local and all zeros for remote. And that tells the system to not do any sort of split tunneling. Everything, including internet bound traffic, has to go through the tunnel. And then we'll click OK. And I did accidentally forget one thing under IKE Gateway. I need to go back here and set the AAA profile that we configured earlier. And that's going to be under IKE Gateway Options. Triple A profile, RA NCP profile. That was that access profile we created earlier. All right, so the last thing we need to configure is a security policy role. And so let's go ahead and click the new button or create button. Call this RA NCP sec policy. Okay, so it's coming from the untrust zone, any address, to the servers zone. And we want to set the address here for destination to the server itself. So server, move that over, click next, advanced security. We want to permit this. We don't need to do anything else and just finish it off. And then we need to commit the configuration. All right, that commit is complete. Let's go ahead and jump to the remote worker device and configure the client settings. All right, so here is the remote worker device. So we need to first configure a connection profile. We'll add a new one. We want to manually create the profile. We'll call this RA NCP LB for learning bytes. 
LAN over IP for communication media. No certificate for authentication since we're using pre-shared keys. We have to specify the tunnel endpoint. Now the user ID, ncp-user1. Now remember, this is case sensitive here. Enter the lab123 as the password. We are using DH19 for PFS. And for the ID, we want to enter user at lb.net. Click finish, and we're not done yet. We need to change a few things. Select the IPsec general settings. Change IKE version 2 to aggressive mode for IKE version 1. And then we need to select an IKE policy. And here we can select the pre-share key AES-256 SHA-256. So that would be the, uh, the encryption and authentication for the proposal. And so that will work with what we set up. And then under the IPsec policy, we can select the AES GCM 256 because that's what we configured for our site on the SRX. Now, keep in mind, you can create new policies here and set up whatever protocols you want to use for authentication and encryption. And so, but this will work for us. We have the DH groups for IKE and IPsec set to Diffie-Hellman group 19. So we'll click OK. Actually, there is another thing I need to do before I click OK. Didn't mean to click OK just yet. Okay, so under identities, we need to set the pre-shared key. We already have the local identity and extended auth information set, but we do have to set the pre-shared key. That's Juniper123. And that's it. So let's go ahead and click OK here. And it selects the connection profile by default since it's the only one. And let's go ahead and connect it. And the tunnel is established. So great, let's disconnect. I want to show that we can't reach the server without the tunnel first. So attempt to log in, just searching for host, can't find it. That's great. No problem. Let's cancel that. And let's connect the VPN. And it's established now. So let's go ahead and log in. So we can move any files. We can select it and download it from the server. And one other thing I do want to show is that we can obviously reach the server. That's at dot one, two, three. Great. But we can't reach another server. I do have that server 122 and we can't reach that because we set up that security policy to only allow access to the dot one, two, three IP address. So that server. So let's go ahead and jump back to the JWeb interface to perform a few verification tasks. Then let's go to IPsec VPN phase one. We can see here that we do have a security association for phase one. Then phase two, and that of course was for the remote worker device. And then we can see the statistics here and we can go to IPsec SAs. And we can see here that we do have an IPsec SA for that remote worker device as well. And so that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure remote access VPNs with the NCP exclusive remote access client using JWeb. And we demonstrated how to verify remote access VPNs using the JWeb. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.